أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمدك اللهم يا من نور قلوبنا بأنوار المحبة العلوية وأكمل لنا ديننا بالولاية المرتضوية وتم نعمته علينا بالهداية الحيدرية ونصلي ونسلم على الخاتم لما السباق والفاتح لمن غلاق والمعلن الحق بالحق والدافع جيشات الأباطيل حبيبك وحبيبنا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى أهل بيت الأطيبين ولا سيما النور على النور في طخياء الديجور والإمام المنصور والسراج المستور مهدي هذه الأمة وخاتم الأئمة إمام زماننا الحجة بن الحسن العسكري عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف ولعنة الله ولانة الله على أعدائهم من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن كجائي من آمد جدائي من آمد جدائي يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن دست منو دامان تو درد منو درمان تو چشم منو احسان تو يا ابن الحسن يا ابن يا ابن الحسن الغوث الغوث الأمان أي مهدي صاحب زمان برس بداد شيعان يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن
الحسن يا ابن الحسن يا ابن الحسن بالله صعب علينا أن تفارقنا وأن يغيب عنا وجهك القمر قالت علينا ليال الانتظار يا ابن الحسن متى متى ترانا ونراك متى ترانا ونراك يا ابن الحسن يا ابن to hasten and to pray for the hastening of the reappearance of our beloved awaited Imam, the awaited Savior, Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, let us recite three loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Respected scholars, dear brothers and sisters, respected younger ones, dear elder ones, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing on our remembrance of Amir al Mu'mineen on this final night of the English program, we notice that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was given a number of titles. For example, Amir al Mu'mineen, Sayyid al Wasiyin, Abal Hassan. One of the titles also was he was Imam al Muttaqeen. Also, according to the hadith of the sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq Salawatullah, he used to mention Amir al Mu'mineen. He would say, Kana Amir al Mu'mineen, Rajulan Da'a. Amir al Mu'mineen. Another of his title was that he was a man known for reciting dua, for supplicating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who used to dedicate his lifetime in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tonight, we are here on one of the special nights, the nights of Qadr. It is important for us to understand the importance of dua. Many questions have been asked about dua. What are the etiquettes of reciting dua? Why have my dua, I've been praying and reciting dua, supplicating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for years and years. But why as if my dua has not been accepted? When we look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on numerous occasions, not only commands, but recommends and advises mankind to recite dua. Dua means to invoke and to call upon him to recite towards him. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ad'uni astajib lakum. Call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recite dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, guaranteed, astajib lakum. Your dua is accepted. Wa'idha sa'alaka ibadi. And another verse, Wa'idha sa'alaka ibadi anni. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِي If my servants asked you, O Prophet, O Prophet of Allah, if the servants of mine, my creation, ask you about me, then let them know that I am near. And if they wish to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their haja, for their dua, let them know I am near. I am near and I shall respond and answer their dua. You notice in a hadith, not only Amir al Mu'mineen kana rajulan da'a was a man known for reciting dua, but you notice the Holy Prophet, for example, would say, A dua silahul mu'min. Dua is the weapon of the believer. And it is the light of the heavens and the earth. You notice, for example, the Prophet would say that عليكم بسلاح الأنبياء 
take hold the weapons that the prophets of Allah used to use. They used to use this weapon. What is this weapon? What is this tool? A dua. He would also say, for example, Tarka dua ma'siya. To stay away from dua and to prevent yourself from calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your particular haja is a form of sin. Hence, one of the recommended acts in salah is for us to raise our hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in qunut for a dua. Now, with the short time that I'm at your service, inshallah, fi khidmatikum, let us understand a few important questions about dua. Number one, why, for example, when I ask a dua, that dua is not accepted? We'll answer this in five stages. Number one, there is no doubt that my knowledge and your knowledge is nothing on par with the hikmah and the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a time when I may be praying and reciting dua for a particular haja. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has listened and answered and responded to my dua. But may I may not see that dua immediately responded towards me. Why? Because there is a hikmah in that dua being responded and given a response later on. There were many times, for example, you pray for a particular thing. You ask dua for a particular hajjah. You notice that dua has been delayed. After when you notice that that dua has been delayed, you say, Alhamdulillah, what a grace it was that I received the qada al hajjah at this particular time. If I had received it then, it would have been for my own danger and worry. Hence, reciting dua of tita'ah, which the brothers and sisters have been reciting in the month of Ramadan. Why? And it so is that what is delayed for me is better for who? For me. For you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know and have true knowledge and full knowledge with the outcome of all of my dua. Number two, many of us when we recite dua, they ask the Imam, Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu alayhi, why when I recite dua, it's as if my dua has not been accepted. I've been praying for a particular haja, it's not been accepted. Why? Because many of us when we recite dua, we recite as if it's a lip service. It's just the tongue oscillating. The heart is somewhere completely else. The heart's focus is not on the dua, but the mind and the focus, the concentration is on something else. It's like saying someone in a lecture, in a lecture hall, when they're in university, when they're in college, or when they're in a majlis. If the speaker is giving a lecture, the ones who are full concentration and full focus on the lecture, they were the ones who would be able to respond better. But the ones who are far, far away and just seeing the lecturer, not taking and grasping the information, they are the ones who won't be able to get most of the information, most of the answers. In the same way, they asked the sixth imam, why is my dua not accepted? He said, because you pray. You pray and recite dua, but you do not have true knowledge and awareness and recognition. When you recite the dua, there is no focus and awareness in the dua. Number two. Number three, when it comes to reciting dua, the, the recommended acts of dua need to be also accepted. For example, they ask the Imam, why when I recite dua, it's not accepted? I'm being at home, I recite dua, but it's as if my dua has not been accepted. Why? Because with your dua, you are not trying your best and working hard and endeavoring to perform the task that you're asking. For example, you sit at home, you've been 11 years in school, college, you sit at home, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, I wish to pass my exams and get A star. But I do not wish to study, I do not wish to go to college, I do not wish to open a book, and I do not wish to read at all about my exams. Do you think you'll pass and get A star? No. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a system in this world. You work hard, you endeavor to go towards your target, reach your status with the dua that you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make your task easier, facilitate your task. Number three. Number four, when it comes to dua, there are etiquettes of reciting dua. Recommended acts in reciting dua. Tonight is Laylatul Qad, one of the nights of Qad. We wish to know the etiquettes of reciting dua. How important it is for me to recite dua, to gain that nearness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have that full attention and focus in dua. Number one, one of the highly recommended acts when it comes to reciting dua is to start your dua and end your dua with the salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. When one recites the dua according to the sixth imam, if he starts with the salawat and ends with a, the with a salawat, the beginning dua is accepted, which is the salawat. The end dua is accepted. Then the middle dua, the part and parcel, the sandwich in the middle is also accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu dua in mahjoob. Every dua is covered until one recites salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. That covering is removed and the dua is accepted. The first etiquette of reciting dua is to start and end your dua with salawat. Number two, an etiquette of reciting dua is to remember others before your own self. Remember on the 15th of the month of Ramadan when we remembered Imam Hassan and Mujtaba alayhi salam, one of the famous traditions in the life of Imam Hassan is that when he would go towards the mihrab of his beloved mother Fatima to Zahra, he would notice Fatima to Zahra would be in the mihrab. She would recite dua, dua, dua until her feet and ankle will swell and she would continue reciting dua. Then he would approach her, Umma, O oh beloved mother, you remembered everyone else in dua and prayers, but you did not remember your own self. She would respond, Al Jar, Thummadar. First others, first neighbors, then your own self. Hence, the dua states, the hadith states from the Holy Sixth Imam that when one recites and remembers 40 believers in his dua, Fastujibaleh, his dua is also accepted and answered, guaranteed. Hence, one of the greatest recommended prayers, Salatul Layl. In Salatul Layl, which is 11 rak'ah, the one rak'ah which is known as Salatul Witr. In Salatul Witr, the whole focus of Salatul Layl is on Salatul Witr. In Salatul Witr, the whole focus of Salatul Witr is on what part? In the Qunut. In the whole focus of Salatul Witr, you've raised yourself from sleep. You've gone to the prayer mat. Everyone else is asleep. Don't suddenly when you go to Salat al start taking photos, Snapchat, here, there, tell everyone that you're on Salat al No. It's a sincere act between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your Snapchat to tell him that you're praying Salat al He knows, he's aware. He recites Salat al Salat al In the Salat al there is a focus. Everyone else is asleep. But you have remembered and you said, Allahumma ghfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat. Allahumma ghfir li. Oh Allah, forgive and protect. And it's recommended to mention 40 of the mu'mineen and mu'minat. By name. For example, Hassan, Hussein, Abbas, Ja'far. All of them, Fatima, Zainab. Name your believing brothers and friends. So that is the second etiquette of reciting. Dua. And, get, and gaining the acceptance of your Dua. The third recommended etiquette, adab of reciting dua is there is a place and time for everything. There is a place for salah and there is a time for salah. Can I pray salat al-fajr now? No. Can I pray salat al-dhuhr asr now? No. Can I pray salat al-eid now? No. 
there is a place and time for dua. And there are specific places and times where dua are guaranteed to be accepted. For example, بَيْنَ الطُّلُعَيْنِ Between Fajr, Salat al-Fajr and Sunrise. This is one of the greatest moments of dua being accepted. When you head towards Salat al-Fajr, stay there and recite some dua. At the time of Laylatul Jum'ah, on the day of Jum'ah, at the time of, which, which other time is it recommended? At the time of Laylatul Qadr, highly recommended to recite dua on this particular night. After every wajib salah, it is highly recommended to recite dua. Even some narrations recite, state that when salah, your wajib salah is prayed, the abwabul jinan, the gates of heaven are open for you. And the angels say, Is'al ma tasha, ask what you wish for. The, the gates of heaven are opened up for you. And when someone, as soon as he prays his salah, rushes and goes away from his prayer mat, the angels look at one another and say, this person had the opportunity for his dua to be accepted, but hurma min dalik. But he refrained from his own dua being accepted. So after every wajib salah, it is also recommended to raise one's hands in dua and ask for dua. Also another moment that dua is highly recommended and accepted at places. For example, in Masjid al-Haram, in Mecca al-Mukarrama. In Masjid al-Nabawi, in the holy shrine of the holy prophet. In other masajid, it is highly recommended to recite dua. At the time and the place where it is raining, where the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are showering upon the creation, are accepted. Finally, Another moment, a question is asked, why is my dua accepted? The final point, the fifth point, is that dua shall not be accepted whilst one is sinning and performing haram. What do we recite in dua we made last night? Allahumma ghfir li al-dhunuban lati tahbisud dua. Oh Allah, I ask you for forgiveness and protection from those sins of mine which are preventing and blocking my dua from being accepted. Yesterday we talked about the bounce check. This one does not even be bounced. This one even does not even head towards the skies because of the sins, 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 sins. They are blocking my dua even from being raised towards the sky. Dua with a sinless person. Dua whilst you have removed yourself from sins, kept yourself away from sins. So when you ask for dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for true forgiveness and repentance. And where else finally is dua guaranteed to be accepted? There is a place which I'm sure every single one of us here wish to be very soon. Aba Abdullah al Hussein's shrine, according to narrations, there are three specialities in Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Al A'immatu min Wuldih. The Imams are from the lineage of Aba Abdullah. Wa Shifa fi Turbatih. And there is a cure and remedy in the Turba of Imam al Hussein. No other Turba, no other dust. No other soul is it permissible for us to sip or have except for the turba khaka shifa of Aba Abdullah al Hussein and finally what dua tahta qubbati istijabat al dua under the shrine of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Hani and glad tidings to those who are tonight under the qubba of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. For not only they are there tonight, but they are also performing one of the recommended acts. On the night, Laylatul Qadr, it is highly recommended to recite Ziyara of Aba Abdullah al Hussein.
Ziyar of Baba Abdullah al Hussein on Laylatul Qadr? Yes. Why? Because Aba Abdullah al Hussein was the embodiment of sincerity. He gave everything he could towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the special status of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, gives everything you wish which is permissible for your hajat when you ask in the name of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Tonight, in the same way that Aba Abdullah al Hussein's ziyarah is being recited by many of the brothers and sisters around the world, especially those who are in the shrine of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, we wish to start our dua with the acceptance of the recitation of the ziyarah of Aba Abdullah al Hussein. But what kind of ziyarah we would like to say? We would like to recite a ziyarah of a true companion of Aba Abdullah al-Hussein, Jabir. Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, his dua was accepted. Do you know how? He wished to see Habibi Hussein, his beloved Hussein. And do you know how he wished to see Imam al-Hussein after the martyrdom? Jabir was partially sighted. He couldn't see. He was blinded. He had a companion by the name of Atiyah. He would say, Atiyah, we are walking towards Habibi Hussein, but I can't see. So Atiyah, pass me some turab, some dust. Ashummuhu. Let me smell the fragrance. If it has the fragrance of Aba Abdullah, we'll stay here. Atiyah gives him some dust. Jabir smells the fragrance. He says, no, Hussein ibn Ali was not buried here. Let's move on. It's a lesson for every single one of us here today. If you go to a place, a gathering, a center, a group, a room, a website that does not have the fragrance of Aba Abdullah al-Hussein, move, walk on. Move. Go to where Hussein ibn Ali stays and resides. Hence Jabir walks on. He gives him the fragrance of the turba. Jabir says, Atiyah, we are going to stay here. He calls out, Habibi Hussein, my beloved Hussein, Assalamu alaik, ya Aba Abdullah. Glad greetings, glad tidings upon you, Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Then he asks him a question. Aba Abdullah, why is it that I cannot hear a response from you, Aba Abdullah? He gives his own musibah. He says, I know why. Why? Because your jism, your holy body is in Karbala. Warras ala al qanat yudaru. Your holy head is not here, Aba Abdullah. It's being moved by Banu Umayya from one spear to another spear. From one city to another city. From Kufa to Sham. Until Jabir notices that there are some groups coming. Atiyah says, Jabir, there is a group coming towards Karbala. Who is it? Atiyah and Jabir approach. It is the Imam of the time, Imam Zainul Abideen. Imam says, A Jabir on Hada? Is this Jabir, the beloved companion of Rasulullah? He says, Naam, Ana Jabir. I am Jabir. I am the great companion of Rasulullah. Imam Zainul Abideen holds the hands of Jabir. Jabir, Jabir, ha huna qutil abi Aba Abdullah. Jabir, here is where my beloved father Aba Abdullah was killed. Jabir, ha huna, this is the area where the women were paraded. Jabir, this is the area where Aba Abdullah qatta'uhu irban irba min al warid ila al warid. They ripped his body into pieces. They slaughtered my beloved father from one vein to another vein. Ya Jabir, my father would call out, Am I fikum Muslim? Is there one Muslim amongst you? They prevented him from one sip of water. Ya Jabir, Jabir, Ya Jabir, Oh Jabir, Oh Jabir, we are the ones who wish to condole you also. We wish to be of 
ولده وصاحب عزاء ولده امام ابو تايم ان شاء الله وي ار ذا وانز هو ويش تو كول اوت وذ جابر اند ذا امامز اند سيد زينب السلام على الحسين السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جابر there is one more body I wish to take you towards قمر بني هاشم قمر بني هاشم أبا عبد الله's beloved brother أبا الفضل عباس he rushes towards أبا الفضل عباس he says this is باب الحوائج we'll start a dua of رفع المصاحف remembering the great حاجات that we all have إن شاء الله with the barakah of صلوات على محمد وآل محمد